Video game tutorials are often overlooked when analyzing the quality of a release. After all, I think we've been programmed to want to skip past these and get right into the action. And honestly, I think this is a fair mindset to have when so many games take the concept of a tutorial way too literally. At this point, most players know how games work at a basic level, and simply need to understand how a specific title works. For example, I'd say that we've reached a point in time where most people who pick up a turn-based RPG will understand that there are things like type advantages and items, but perhaps they don't understand the specific kinds of things that the game has to offer. Of course, by appealing to those who are more experienced, you have to somewhat neglect younger or less seasoned players. So what can game developers do to make a tutorial that both teaches the player about the game while also getting straight into the action? Well first, let's take a look at what games have already done this so well. And how can I make a video about tutorials without talking about arguably the greatest of them all, Breath of the Wild. The Great Plateau has you explore an insanely large portion of Hyrule that offers plenty for both beginners and seasoned veterans of the series. There were a lot of factors at play here though. First of all, this game was pretty much a brand new experience for all Zelda fans. There really isn't anything close to Breath of the Wild's gameplay within its own series, so that alone kind of made it important for the tutorial to actually teach players what the game was about. Something else that had to be considered was how they would tie in the tutorial with the greater importance of the story, which they managed to tie in quite well. When you begin the adventure, you see Link waking up and having to collect the Sheikah Slate. This item will prove to be the single most important part of the tutorial and the entire game. By the time you leave the beginning cave area, you have already learned how to equip things from your inventory, sprint and climb, but none of this is boring because we're all more focused on the narrative. Why did Link just wake up in a random pod? Who is this voice talking to us? And once you leave the cave, you're introduced to a brand new Hyrule. Naturally, throughout this next section, you learn about cooking and the new combat system. But it seems that for everything you learn about the mechanics, there's a new story element which keeps you hooked. In a way, you really do get right into the main gameplay. But instead of giving you all of the runes at once, it starts you off with the most simple to use, Magnesis. In between each of the shrines that give you these abilities, you're forced to learn things like cooking spicy food, fighting enemy camps, and hiding from guardians. And by the time you obtain and use all of these abilities, you're finally given the paraglider and sent out to the rest of Hyrule. Perhaps you didn't even realize you were in a tutorial either because of how well integrated it was into the story. Technically speaking, this tutorial is even canon to the game since Link himself needed to learn how to navigate the world with the Sheikah Slate. Thinking back to when the game came out, I distinctly remember the moments on the Great Plateau that made me struggle. When I had to go to the snowy region, I couldn't really figure out how to stop taking damage, and eventually when I figured out you needed to cook spicy food, I truly understood the importance of it. If we compare that to games that just tell you how important things are, I I would say Breath of the Wild takes a much better approach. After all, getting warned about something is usually never enough to fully convince us of its importance or danger. Overall, the Great Plateau gave us a completely open experience, establishing to the player that this is the new way Zelda is played. The Great Plateau is essentially a microcosm for the main adventure, since you go to four shrines that give you unique abilities, much like the four divine beasts that have you unlock powers once you beat them. Basically, this is a tutorial that doesn't waste any of your time and teaches you exactly what you need to know without making it too obvious and taking away your freedom. Of course, beyond the Great Plateau, we have the Great Sky Island in Tears of the Kingdom. And not to sound like I don't really like this area, but I just don't remember it as fondly. The most notable thing about the Sky Island is the fact that it is almost completely linear. While this isn't necessarily a bad thing, those who prefer more freedom might find this a little annoying. The actual problem I have with the Sky Island is that it kinda sucks at explaining the new mechanics to the player. Many things are explained with simple text this time around, and if you accidentally go too fast through the dialogue, you might miss something super important. I literally almost beat the entire game without knowing that you could upgrade your Zonai device battery life. In general, this tutorial feels like it was exactly that. Unlike Breath of the Wild, I was basically speedrunning so I could get to the surface of Hyrule instead of taking in the new Sky area. While that is somewhat fault of my own perception, I think it also has to do with how strict the beginning areas feel. The thing is, linearity in tutorials doesn't necessarily mean that they're boring or dull. Just take a look at how Super Mario Galaxy handled it. So just like any other Mario game, you get a few moments to just move around with running and jumping in the beginning, but in Galaxy you're taken through a series of cutscenes shortly after, establishing the storyline. Once you regain control of Mario, you're presented with a completely different style of movement. In this game you're bound to these small planets, meaning you'll have to navigate spheres for a lot of the game. Instead of giving you a boring tutorial, this game tasks you with collecting these 
three bunnies on this tiny planet. In a way, this is kind of guaranteeing you get used to the new gravity system anyway. After this short segment, you meet Rosalina and gain the ability to spin. Again, much like the Great Plateau, this game doesn't force all of its mechanics on you early, allowing you to become proficient in the basics first. From here, you pretty much go straight into a typical level of the game. This portion does its best to introduce many of the things you'll see later in the game like these on and off tiles and key puzzles. Overall, this tutorial doesn't take too long and while it is mandatory, it's still fun to play even if you know how the game works. It just doesn't feel like it's holding your hand and babying you. Ironically, the next example of a great tutorial is one that literally does that. If you were a gamer in 2015, I'm sure you remember how much praise Undertale was given for its game design. And naturally, such a great game began with an amazing tutorial. That intro sequence with Flowey is perhaps one of the greatest ways Toby Fox could have introduced Undertale to the player, since it shows that the game is clearly not going to be a simple RPG. But after this, you're brought through a sequence of rooms that are clearly meant to be tutorial rooms to teach you how puzzles work. But in reality, they're already completed by Toriel, the person who saved you from Flowey. This game intentionally holds holds your hand, but in a way that we can tell is humorous. Not to mention, it also kind of shows how Undertale is a lot more about the story rather than the mechanics. The next part of the tutorial is the fight with the dummy, which once again subverts expectations by literally telling you how to avoid fighting. After this, we get another series of puzzles that are completed by Toriel, and just when the humor of it starts to wear off, we finally get to move alone, through a straight hallway. Of course after this, we are let off on our own, but here's where the psychology of how this tutorial is so good shows. You are told to not explore and to stay where you are. The thing is, the actual tutorial of the game begins in the next few rooms. So rather than being forced through a boring tutorial, you're given free will to take an act of rebellion and go through it yourself. The puzzles and battles through these sections are definitely not boring or anything. But the fact that you're intentionally coddled for the start of the game makes this section feel much more satisfying to complete. And since Torio basically says that these puzzles coming up would be too dangerous to attempt, you kind of get reverse psychology into completing them. Once you reach the end of the ruins, you're faced with the ultimate lesson if you make the wrong decision in the fight against Torio. Knowing all this, Undertale's Ruins should be considered a true example of how to make a near perfect tutorial. Since this game was so different from other RPGs, it was so important to convey that through meaningful gameplay and story. This tutorial not only teaches you the basics of Undertale's puzzles and combat, but also establishes that your choices matter, even this early in the game. As much as I'd love to talk about bad tutorials, I don't really think they need much analysis. If anything, bad tutorials are the industry standard. Even in some of the greatest games of all time, the tutorial is usually bland and just slow paced. And when we do get a great introduction for a game, it's honestly just a pleasant surprise. So now that we've gone over some great tutorials, what specifically makes a good one? Well of course it depends on the genre, but in general a good goal is to make the tutorial not feel like one. We can all pretty much tell when a game is holding our hand and treating us like we've never played a game before. So if there's anything that a tutorial can do to avoid this feeling, that would already put it way ahead of the competition. There are a few other things that would make a great tutorial though. One of the most important things is actually integrating the story of the game into the tutorial. Whether that's gaining certain abilities or just getting straight into an important scene of the game, this method can drastically take away feelings of boredom from a player. When you boil things down, a good tutorial is one that is almost Almost as enjoyable as the rest of the game. This is why I believe that Breath of the Wild is the greatest video game tutorial out there. The fact that it acts as a mini Hyrule basically allows you to get a taste of the fun that's yet to come. Hopefully in the future, games get more tutorials just like this, because I find that when we do get great ones, it's actually one of the most memorable parts about a game. 